Hey guys, so this is Evie and today I'm going to be talking about Capital One technical interview. And if you're interested, stay tuned. Instead of having like one big interview interview for TDP piece, I thought I might as well just make the technical and then the case and then the behavioral with a little bit more tips that I actually forgot to include in the previous video. So technical and case are actually two most important interviews for the Capital One interview process. However, behavioral can fail you, so don't take it too easy. So in comparison, technical and case do give you sort of like a rate scale uh, uh, versus behavioral. You can think of it as like pass or fail. They can say like what rating you are in as well. However, for them, it's going to be like either pass or fail. And if you were bad, you're going to fail. You better hope that the case and technical really, really liked you for them to say, OK, we can let this guy or this gal into the Capital One company majority of people that you will meet for the technical actually are gonna be your age or a little bit older than your age well usually it should be like two years older than your age but they're gonna but if they finish school earlier obviously they're gonna be there like similar age as you and right away i feel like it creates a little bit more easement versus you kind of sweating and just like oh, i can't breathe i'm nervous this is like an adult and i'm being interviewed by adults you will have that chance with the case and maybe behavioral but the technical sometimes is a little bit much more easier because you are within your group however some people and some i guess technical recruiters who are tdps you also can be a little bit scared about them judging you a little bit more critically just because they are on the same level as you and they are behind the table but usually these are not the type of people who are giving you the interviews, but these cases exist. And the reason why you see a lot of TDPs actually giving you the technical interview is because usually the principal developers, they don't have time and they have way more responsibility than just the regular technical TDPs who are like a one, two year old within the program. And that's why you see much more younger people. But sometimes you do see, of course, like manager level or principal, uh, just because uh, the program sometimes requires you to come in. And that requires, but they gently offer you for you to come out and interview and take some time of the day because this way you're benefiting the whole company and not just yourself. So now to the meat of the video. The Capital One interview, the technical interview specifically, is going to be five phases. Some water break you always should drink water because especially when you're talking, my throat is dry, but... First step of the interview is actually intro and easement. You can think of it as an icebreaker and the whole thing about it is to take five minutes or a couple minutes, less than five minutes, in order to introduce yourself and kind of have like a little small chit chat and say, oh, what are you interested? What do you do? I mean, like, what are you studying? What are, where your interest lies? Or talk something about yourself because this helps the, or at least the whole idea is that this is gonna help you as interviewee to ease into the conversation or into the interview process. So you're not gonna feel a little bit, oh, you're talking to somebody, uh, to an interviewer and just being overwhelmed. So that's why you al we allocate a little bit of time to do that. But of course, we don't try to take too much time because the main goal is to see your technical knowledge. And the main thing is to give you time in order to show us what you know and how well you know it. Step two, design problem. And this is a very interesting, like it's, some people like it, some people don't. And the idea of it is to take five to 10 minutes in order to give you a problem. And this is a design problem. So what you're expected to do is you're expected to look at it, read it, ask any questions and then do a high level design, high level solution of this problem. Think of it as you're an architect and you need to solve this problem. So you're trying to design a high level solution for this problem. And this is exactly what the question is asking you. So a main important point is to think object oriented way instead of like databases and LAMP. Think back to basics, think foundations, think classes, think, met think method and fields and private, protected, public. Why exactly are you using it? All of that jazz. So focus a little bit on like the basic object oriented versus uh, parallelism and databases and how you would index your database. So number three is the short question. I know it's very creative, 
But uh, don't forget, after short question, there is a long question. So make sure that you are allocating the correct time and not spending too much on the problem. This type of problem specifically is targeting very simple modifications such as like strings, arrays, array lists, maybe some stacks and queues. But in essence, it's a very short problem and you are not gonna end up spending a lot of time because you're not really... Um, it's very simple, that's it. So this actually applies to shorts and to the long. So step number one when you're given that problem is ask clarification question. By not asking the clarification question, you're actually missing out because the whole interview or let's say a lot of interviews are specifically put as they start with a simple question and you have to ask clarification questions in order not to miss out. And this applies for like real world because if you're not asking the questions, you are gonna go ahead and code up something. And then after they, once you present it to the product owner, they're like, oh, well actually you need to also do this. And you're like, well crap, uh, how am I gonna do this? Because I have to refactor the whole code base since I didn't think that this is gonna be the case. So don't expect, like there are a couple of things that could be mixed, missed, but don't expect that the product owner can like put out everything that they need into this sort of simple request. And same thing is what Capital One is testing you to see if you will be asking. I hope I drilled down a lot. Do not forget to ask clarification questions unless the problem is super clear for you, like to the point where it's just vivid clear, but then uh, your recruiter or I guess your interviewer would probably really question if you have seen the question before and that's why you're not asking anything. That's a red flag by the way. Long question which is number four and I know like I said very creative but this problem is going to take around 15 minutes and the idea is that this is a little bit more complicated prob problem and it's probably going to go ahead and focus on some hash maps or the binary trees with some type of traversal. It could be just as simple as in order or it could be like depth for surge breath for search but always whenever you're doing tree traversals think of a simple solution don't go into like i would do a depth for search breath for search you can mention and say that you know about these uh traversals but don't go in and code it sometimes a simple in order can just solve your problems and sometimes a simple hash map would solve a lot of your issue with the lookup and then the searches and insertions. And actually, this is why whenever you're doing any interview questions, make sure to think about hash maps because these are magical data structures that are just like, oh, they're great, they're great. So just think about hash maps always in the back of your head. Just think about them. So last one is number five, and that is the closing. And the closing is important because it's not specifically that a way for the interviewer to tell you you passed or not but in their eyes you can maybe probably see if you passed or not their section but still if your technical was great but the case was bad and the behavioral was bad i would not really kind of feel good about passing the interview process so you the closing remark basically means that the interviewer is gonna <laughs> ask you do you have any questions and don't really feel sort of like i have to have prepared set of question uh, questions for this ask things that are interesting inter you would be interested in such as like are you liking your position as tdp what are you working on do you enjoy this field i'm interested in this field do you think it's possible to be like work to work in this field as tdp so ask things that you are interested in. and because in the end you're going to be taking the job or not taking the job and you want to know the the, the interviewer who ha who does work in capital one their experience so it's not something that they will test you and if you're not if you're not gonna ask any questions they're not gonna penalize you for like oh this person did great interview and like they answered all of the points but you know they didn't really ask questions at the end no closing remark is sort of like a nice handshake saying good job you did your best today whatever the results in good job that's pretty much it on the closing remark and the reason for that is no interview should be left abrupted because I feel like that's awkward and weird and once you got your answer or like once you finish your questions you just say okay goodbye thank you have a good day and leave no and that's why this is important to 
have like some type of closure of this interaction that you just had with this person and that's why i guess they sort of like include the closing section which is like five minutes max i think unless you finished all of your interview earlier and you're like okay let's zoom and just talk about random things that's also possible i've heard the stories like that now for the tips lead code lead code lead code lead code is a great resource a lot of people who have sort of taking the interview they have they would you know how they have like little section like google blah 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 so a lot of people who have taken the interviews they sometimes would put like oh this repeated question in capital one interview and this is repeated and this is repeated so you should go through them i'm not saying that this question is gonna be present you might as well just go through them and code it out or, or code it out also on the piece of paper because usually you're going to be using paper um, sometimes you can go ahead and use a whiteboard but i think paper is a little bit better and you can easily scratch it out versus whiteboard is longer but it's obviously your preference and the interviewer should be able to give you that preference another tip is look at the glass door so glass door sometimes has I wouldn't say a leak interview questions, but they do say what it was based on. They would say string modification or something like that. And I would take a look, but because of the whole thing of the process that you would sign NDA, NDA and a lot of people who have failed the process, they wouldn't want to share the interview questions with other people in order to get them in. That's usually not like a mentality that a lot of people have. So I would so don't expect the questions in, on there, but do expect maybe like the topics that were asked because some people do share that and that's okay to share. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and if you did, that's great. I am happy for you to take this sort of like intro step into uh, trying and studying for the interview. I wish you luck, you can do it. And if you do do it, definitely look at the benefits that Capital One offers if you are given an offer because there are a lot. Two year rotational program is just a great experience for, for all of us. So take a look, take advantage, and I wish you luck. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Yeah, do you see this guy? <laughs> You're so cute. He's like 11 years old. Nope, 13.